GoldenEye is a 1995 spy film in the 17th in the James Bond series produced by Eon Productions and the first to star Pierce Brosnan as the fictional MI6 agent, James Bond. Directed by Martin Campbell, it was the first in the series not to utilize any story elements from the works of novelist Ian Fleming. It was also the first James Bond film not produced by Albert R. Broccoli, following his stepping down from Eon Productions and replacement by his daughter, Barbara Broccoli, alongside Michael G. Wilson, although Albert was still involved as a consultant producer. It was also his final film project before his death, in 1996. The story was conceived and written by Michael France, with later collaboration by other writers. In the film, Bond fights to prevent a rogue MI6 agent, Sean Bean, from using a satellite weapon against London to cause a global financial meltdown. The film was released after a six-year hiatus in the series caused by legal disputes, during which Timothy Dalton's contract for the role of James Bond expired and he was replaced by Brosnian. Emma was also recast with actress Judi Dench becoming the first woman to portray the character, replacing Robert Brown. The role of Miss Moneypenny was also recast, with Caroline Bliss being replaced by Samantha Bond. Desmond Llewellyn was the only actor to reprise his role as Q. It was the first Bond film made after the dissolution of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, which provided a backdrop for the plot. Principal photography for Goldeneye took place in the United Kingdom, Russia, Monte Carlo and Puerto Rico. It was the inaugural film production to be shot at Levenstein Studios. The first Bond film to use computer-generated imagery, GoldenEye was also the final film of special effects supervisor Derek Menning's career and was dedicated to his memory. The film accumulated a worldwide gross of over $350 million worldwide, considerably better than Dalton's films without taking inflation into account. It received positive reviews from critics, viewing Brosnan as a definitive improvement over his predecessor. It also received award nominations for Best Visual Effects and Best Sound from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. Following the release of Licence to Kill in July 1989, pre-production work for the seventh film of the James Bond series, the third to start Timothy Dalton, began in May 1990. A poster for the then-upcoming film was featured on the Carlton Hotel during the 1990 Cannes Film Festival. In August, the Sunday Times reported that producer Albert Broccoli had parted company with writer Richard Malbum, who had worked on the scripts of all but three Bond films so far, and director John Glenn, responsible for the previous five installments of the series. Broccoli listed among the possible directors John Landis, Ted Kotchoff, Roger Spotswaite, or John Burham. Broccoli's stepson, Michael G. Wilson, contributed to the script, and the Wise Guy co-producer, Alfonso Reguero Jr., was hired to rewrite. Production was set to start in 1990 in Hong Kong, and the release date of late 1991. In an interview in 2010, Timothy Dalton stated, We were ready. We were talking to directors before the project entered development hell because of legal problems between Metro Golden Mayer, a parent company of the series distributor, United Artists, and Broccoli's Dangjack, owners of the Bond film rights. In 1990, MGM UA was to be sold for $1.5 billion to Kintex, an Australian American financial services company that had begun making television broadcast and entertainment purchases. When Kintex could not provide the $50 million letter of credit, the deal fell apart. Giancarlo Peretti, CEO of the company called Pathé Entertainment, quickly moved to buy MGN UA for $1.2 billion and merged the companies to create MGN Pathé Communications. Peretti intended to sell off the distribution rights to the studio's catalogue so he could collect advance payments to finance the buyout. This included international broadcasting rights to the 007 library at cut-rate prices, leading Danjik to sue, alleging the licensing violated bonds distribution agreements that the company made with United Artists in 1962. Eventually, countersuits were filed. When asked what he would do following the resolution of the lawsuit, Dalton told Broccoli that he was unlikely he would continue the role. To replace Dalton, the producers chose Pierce Brosnan, who had been prevented from succeeding Roger Moore in 1986 because of his contract to continue starring in the television series Remington Steel. He was introduced to the public at a press conference in Regent Palace Hotel on 8th of June 1994. Before negotiating with Brosnan, Mel Gibson, Hugh Grant and Liam Neeson passed on the role. Eason said that he passed on the role because his then-wife Natasha Richardson wouldn't marry him if he accepted it. Broccoli and Campbell met Ray Fiennes about taking the part. Paul McGann was the studio's original choice for the role and would have been cast if Brosnan had turned it down. Brosnan was paid $1.2 million for the film out of a total budget of $60 million. Judy Dench, an English actress, was cast as M, replacing Robert Brown, making this the first film in the series to feature a female M. The decision was widely believed to have been inspired by Stelly Rivington, having become a head of MI5 in 1992. The character of Alex Trevelyan, originally scripted as Augustus Trevelyan and envisaged as an older character and a mentor to figure to Bond, with Anthony Hopkins and Alan Rickman reportedly sought for the role, but both turned it down. Sean Bean was subsequently cast and the characters rewritten to be Bond's peer. Initially John Wu was approached to direct and turned down the opportunity, but he said he was honoured by the offer. The producers then chose New Zealander Martin Campbell as the director. 
Brosnan later described Campbell as a warrior-like in his take on the piece and that there was a huge passion there on both our parts. The film was the first one bound by BMW's three-picture deal, so the producers offered BMW's latest roadster, the BMW Z3. The theme song for GoldenEye was written by Bono and Edge of the famous band U2 and performed by Tina Turner. As the producers did not collaborate with Bono or Edge, the film score did not incorporate any of the theme song's melodies, as was the case in previous James Bond films. Swedish group Ace of Bass also wrote a proposed theme song, but their label, Artistia Records, pulled the band out of the project fearing the negative impact in case the film flopped. The soundtrack was composed and performed by Eric Sierra. Prolific Bond composer John Barry said that despite an offer by Barbara Broccoli, he had turned it down. Sierra's score was heavily criticised, and even director Martin Campbell would later express his disappointment with the score, citing budget constraints and difficulty working with Sierra, who became uncooperative when asked to rescore the St. Petersburg tank chase after Campbell rejected his first submitted track. John Altman would later provide the music for that sequence. Now, one of the strengths of GoldenEye is this well-executed blend of action, espionage and the classic Bond elements. The film delivers thrilling set pieces, including an explosive tank chase through the streets of St. Petersburg and an intense finale atop a satellite dish. The action sequences are expertly choreographed and offer a perfect mix of excitement and spectacle. Now, for me, Pierce Brosnan really shines in his debut as James Bond, bringing a suave and sophisticated demeanor to the role. He embodies charm, wit and physicality that fans have come to expect from the character. Whereas Dalton maybe made this character a little bit too serious for some, I particularly like Dalton, Brosnan sort of finds a way now to strike a balance between the suaveness of Sean Connery and the wit of Roger Moore, making his character somewhat of his own. Supporting cast here also deliver strong performances. Sean Bean is compelling as the film's main antagonist, providing a complex and personal motivation for his actions. Isabella Scorpio plays Natalie Semenova, a capable and resourceful Russian computer programmer who becomes Bond's ally, and Vomika Youngson portrays Zenia Anatop, a deadly femme fatale. For me, GoldenEye also succeeded in updating the Bond franchise for a new era. The film acknowledges the end of the Cold War and changing political landscape, reflecting the shift in global dynamics. It also introduces more nuanced and well-rounded female characters, departing from the traditional Bond girl archetype. The film also incorporates modern technology, including the use of computers and the internet, adding a sort of contemporary touch that was of course appropriate for the mid-90s. Furthermore, the film's screenplay is well written, blending suspense, humour and intrigue. It weaves together an intricate plot twists and turns, keeping the audience engaged throughout. The dialogue is also quite sharp and memorable, delivering several iconic one-liners that have become synonymous within the Bond franchise. Look, it's a good and strong start for Pierce Brosnan as the iconic character. One of my minor criticisms maybe for the film is that sometimes Brosnan maybe just didn't take himself a little bit too seriously and maybe the antagonist, albeit played well by Sean Bean, could have been a bit more memorable. However, these are minor criticisms to what overall is a good film and was really a good start to Pierce Brosnan's take on the famous character. From Brosnan's charismatic performance to its thrilling action sequences and the modernised approach to the classic spy genre, GoldenEye gets an 8.5 out of 10.